Hello everyone, in this video we will be discussing about another water soluble vitamin that is riboflavin, riboflavin otherwise known as B2. Okay, this is the second B complex vitamin to be studied. So to coming to discuss about the riboflavin, so there are different names of riboflavin like lactoflavin is there and overflavin is there based on the substance where you will get this vitamin B2. So if it is found in the milk that is lactoflavin, if it is found in the egg that is overflavin, if it is in the other pulses and cereals it is known as riboflavin. So coming to talk about the structure of uh, riboflavin, so it contains a heterocyclic isoaloxazine ring, okay this is heterocyclic isoaloxazine ring and attached to a alcohol that is ribitol. So ribitol is nothing but alcohol form of carbohydrate okay when ribose converted to alcohol form ribose is an aldehyde and ribitol is an alcohol so when ribose undergoes reduction it will be converted to alcohol form so that is ribitol so chemically riboflavin is made up of two parts one is isoaloxazine ring okay heterocyclic isoaloxazine ring and second part that is sugar alcohol that is ribitol okay it is sensitive to light so riboflavin is photosensitive so when it get exposed to the light it will may get undergo degradation so coming to the sources of uh, vitamin b2 or riboflavin so as i mentioned lactoflavin overflavin so milk is the richest source cheese eggs meat yeast extract green vegetables or the other sources rich sources of riboflavin so how much amount of riboflavin you are supposed to take or b2 you are supposed to take per day so the recommended daily allowance that is 1.3 to 1.7 milligrams per day in case of pregnancy and lactation this requirement will be enhanced so absorption and transport being a water soluble vitamin the absorption and transport is by simple diffusion and it is a simple one so coming to active forms of vitamin b2 so similarly like b1 what is the coenzyme or active form that is tpp so here riboflavin the active form is 2 okay the active forms are 2 one is fmn other one is fad fmn is flavin monoadenide nucleotide and fad is flavin adenine dinucleotide so i will show you the difference you can see here so when you add phosphate group to riboflavin okay here the donor of phosphate group is atp after donating one phosphate group to riboflavin atp converted to adp and then after receiving phosphate group riboflavin converted to fmn flavin mononucleotide and again accepting two phosphate groups so here again the donor of phosphate groups are atp so here not phosphate actually to say so amp it will be taking amp adenine monophosphate so in previous reaction conversion of riboflavin to flavin mononucleotide there is a acceptance of phosphate group from atp but in second reaction conversion of fmn to fad the whole molecule of amp will be incorporated rather than phosphate so two phosphate groups will be released as pyrophosphates uh, inorganic pyrophosphates and the leftover amp adenine monophosphate will be added to FM, fmn to convert to fad so that it will that's why it is known as flavin adenine dinucleotide so to talk about functions so the active forms are FMN and FAD. So there are so many reactions which are dependent of FMN and FAD. So here FMN and FAD involved in dehydrogenation reactions and they are acting as positive groups of several enzymes. So they catalyze oxidation reduction reactions. Oxidation reduction. Remember oxidation reduction reactions are mainly happen with the help of FAD or FMN. So they are also involved in growth, repair, development of body tissues, healthy skin eyes and tongue etc so there are enzymes which dependent on fmn and there are enzymes which dependent on fad so both fmn and fad have coenzyme activity so coming to the deficiency manifestations so when you are having deficiency of vitamin b2 okay there are oral manifestation there are facial there are ocular so three types of manifestations are there based on the organ so oral manifestations like angular stomatitis cracks or the corners or fissures of the lips and chiliosis glossitis all these are the breakage of tongue and uh, purpling of tongue chiliosis and glossitis glossitis is nothing but purple tongue 
okay so by observing the purple term you can say that you are deficient of b2 or riboflavin and facial dermatitis of uh, nasoglobial region and ocular vascularization of cornea so these are all the observable symptoms in case of vitamin b2 deficiency so in the picture you can make out magenta colored tongue okay this is a purple colored tongue magenta or purple colored tongue so this is called glossitis so that's all about vitamin b2 riboflavin thank you for listening thank you